All right, so we're getting there. This is Jen Meyer from Relevance. She says I can design. Totally. We'll see. Totally can. Okay, um, first off, right out of the gate, I like to talk and I like you guys to talk. So I want this to be kind of interactive. If you guys have questions as I'm going through, uh, please let me know. If there's something that's too long, we can talk about it later, but don't be afraid to interject things. And as a fair warning, I may force you to interject things. So be aware of that. It's like the splash zone. I'm telling you it's going to happen. So just be prepared. Um, no, it's for everybody. You guys are all in the splash zone. It, it splashes all. Yeah, you're not safe. It doesn't matter. You can be all back there. You're still not safe. It's good. So um, this is interesting. I, usually I give this talk to much more kind of hardcore developer audiences. So uh, quickly, participation. How many people are hardcore developers? Oh, okay, that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Some of you might be developers, you're just not hardcore, right? That's okay, that's cool. I like you anyway. Um, is there anybody in here who defines themselves as a designer? Okay, decent designer turnout. Okay, so this is kind of for developers, obviously. Talking about you know what design is and what we do with design, all that fun stuff. The idea, even if as a designer, you can probably get some ideas about how to talk about this, how to communicate it, how to collaborate. That's basically what we're going to be talking about here. Um, and I always start out with the usually when I'm well, with a lot of developers, I start out with the confession that I am a designer. Um, it's whenever I say that to people, though, I always feel like I have to qualify it and explain what that is because everybody has their own ideas of what designer is, especially in this little field. So I say I'm a designer, but then I also say like I have no formal design background like at all. The only formal education I have is in computer science. And as a designer right now, I work in a small software company called Relevance. And as a designer, yeah, I do design, I do front end development, I do a little bit of UX, I do wireframes, I do some print pieces, I do a little bit of everything. Mostly, I like to work directly in the applications and I like to do front end development and I like to code when I design. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, that's kind of what I like to think myself as. So they're kind of those unicorns, right, that some people believe don't exist or not. I'll, get, I'll come back around to that a little bit at the end. But because I do consider myself that kind of person, and there really isn't a category that usually gets, usually they get left out. So that's why I say, yes, I'm a designer, but then I have to describe it. So I'm going through my whole career like that, never sure how to describe things or where I belong. I'm always in this middle ground. It's always made me think a lot about, okay, what is this thing between design and development? How do these things fit together? You know, am I this one or that one? Are they totally separate? How does all that work? And as I go through my career as a designer working closely with developers, I believe that one of the biggest things that causes that gap is I don't know if developers really understand what design is. And it's not necessarily a developer's fault. I think there's a lot of miscommunication about how we describe what design is and what, how it's useful in there. So that's what we're going to attack now. And we're going to go through all of this. OK, bring it. What do you guys think? Developers, get all, all of your frustrations. What do you think design is? What makes you angry? What pisses you off about what designers do all the time? You can, this is your time. Does anybody have like a definition? Of what, or you can be nice too, and that's, that's not as fun, but you can do it. Yeah. Okay, awesome, interesting choice of words, yeah. Okay, it, creating something as a function, I like that. Anybody else? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? That's all right. Process removing constraints. I'm liking that. that that's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. Okay, that, that's an interesting point. I understand that completely. So there are different types of design, I and mean, we have to break it down into things like that. That's totally understandable. I'll get around to that, too. Thanks for making that point. Anybody else want to throw something out? Go ahead. So isn't it like the interface? OK, interface. Sure. Why not? <laughs> OK, so there's, this, I mean, this is a big thing, right? OK, I'm going to take you a quick crash course with some actual designers and definitions just to see how that feels, OK? Does anybody know who Charles Eames is? Designers, it doesn't count. You guys know. <laughs> Whatever. 
<laughs> Charles Eames is an industrial designer. He and his wife, Ray Eames, they did a lot of really cool stuff, like chairs like that that you've seen. I'm not going to read all these. I have a lot of quotes, because I like quotes, and they make me sound smart. So, but, so they're in there. But I, what's that? Oh, OK. <laughs> I, I like this quote. I like um, solving a problem. I think that's an interesting thing out of this. How about Saul Bass? I mean, you know Saul Bass? I mean, we watch Hitchcock, Hitchcock movies. He's on newer ones, too, but does a lot of credit sequences. Um, things like that's where you would probably know him the most for. Although he did a ton. He was a mid-century designer, did a lot of stuff. He says design is thinking made visual. How about Paul Rand? This is another mid-century designer. There's people you've seen his work, even if you don't know it. He's done a lot of corporate logos, things like that. Um, this is a little bit long-winded, but basically he comes around to saying that there is no single definition. Design is so simple, that's why it's so complicated. This may seem like kind of pointless to you. Like you're like, designers don't even know what it is. No wonder developers don't know. And there's a certain amount that it's, it's true. It's, it's this big thing. Everybody's got their opinions about it. And there's a lot of ideas about what it is, what it isn't. Um, so we're going to start breaking this down now, though, OK? So thank you for bringing up the things about software design, because when we talk about design, there's lots of different things that we can talk about that is still design. These are just a few things that are kind of in the visual des design area. And these are all slightly different types of things. We work with some of these when we do make applications. We work with interaction experience, web interface design, obviously. Some of the other ones, graphic design doesn't <coughs> go in as much, but it's a part. We don't actually do industrial design, but we, you know, we work with products that are the product of industrial design, and so we design for them. Yeah. So yeah, the comment about software design. Right. I, I went to school as an electrical engineer, and we talked about design as well. And I'm sitting there thinking about that and trying to figure out what definition we use for design in the engineering world. Mm -hmm. And it's really that creative piece where you're applying some knowledge set to a problem mm -hmm. and, and solving the requirements, solving the problem with some creative application of stuff. Right. You're kind of doing my job for me almost. <laughs> because it's interesting, some people brought up the idea of like in so software engineering, there is design too, and it doesn't have anything to do with visuals. It's how architecture, it's how you structure things. My point is that even though a lot of these are with you know more tactile or visual types of design, you're still doing the same process essentially, um, which I try to make that point to say that even when you're doing visual design, it's not just about the visuals. It's about you know the stuff that's going on underneath your structure and your architecture. Those are things to bring out in there. Okay, so you know I'm starting to get into this. It kind of preempted me. I usually say, well, why do you care about this? We've already kind of gone into why you care is because this is kind of the whole structure of making an application, Ma you know, making something interactive is uh, you know not just this pretty layer on top, but talking about the structure and how things flow together, how things work together. Even if what you're talking about is actually visual, how does that work with everything else? Um, and you know, developers, do you guys care? Because this is part of what you do. It's part of that the product. It will make it better if people, you know, this is part of what people interface with. And if people can interface better with your product, then the product will be better. And it's just, it's all good. So this is kind of, I'm making the case for design being a really an integral part of the things that you're building. Um, on the other side of that is too, is I, I'm not just trying to tell you you should be doing this. I want to tell you you can do this. I feel like developers feel like, oh, I can't do design. I don't understand colors. I can't make things look nice, and therefore I can't do it, and things like that. You know, design is really, it's communication, first and foremost. You're you communicating a message. You're communicating through an interface. You're telling users how to use this. You're communicating those things. You're communicating f thoughts and feelings, experiences, all of this type of stuff. You got this. You guys could totally do that. It's not magic. We can do it. And the other part of this, this is teachable. I just told you before. I operate and work as a designer now. I, I'm entirely self-taught. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm all not, you know, I'm not as sophisticated as other visual designers are. But if I can do it, you guys can totally do it. You can get a little of this design knowledge and put it into your development stuff. I want you to feel that it's not magical and mystical and it just kind of happens and there's a sense that creatives just, you know, sit down and there's a bolt of lightning out of the blue and everything looks fantastic. And that's it. And it's not really how it works. Maybe some people operate like that. I don't operate like that. And I don't, I don't think that you have to. I think it's a lot better to break that process down and understand how it works, how those things are going under the surface. So basically what we're going to do now is I've picked out a few myths, 
misconceptions that I think people have about design, and then we're going to break them down and show you know the gears and everything working underneath. So this is the first one we've already kind of touched on. I think we've almost touched on all of the myths I have. This one definitely has. This idea is design is decoration. You guys may not have heard about some of those other guys. You might have heard of this guy, though. It is not just what it looks like and feels like. Design is how it works. This is my favorite design quote about why I do my stuff I do in my career, period. Like I said, I don't come from a visual design background. I came, started came to web design by teaching myself how to, to code HTML and CSS and went on from there. I was writing HTML for, I don't know, three, four years before I even knew what Photoshop was. So to me, it's all about functionality. It's all about you know, making how it works, how it goes together. Um, then I learned how to translate the visual aspects into that. That's still how it works too. But you have to realize connecting all the things too. So, okay, here I'm gonna pick on developers again. How many of you have ever created a app, site, whatever, made it functional, have the content stuff in, whatever, handed it off to a designer and say, here, make it look pretty? All right, you're very honest, I admire that. Yeah, don't do that again, okay? I will, I will find you. <laughs> <laughs> I get that a lot. I, I hear that a lot from people. I understand. I, I do get where you're coming from. And it, you know, it happens too in our process, but everything like that. But essentially, that is putting the idea is that design is this pretty layer on top, and that's it, when that's actually not what's going on. And so you're much better off if you start thinking about in terms of the functionality and how the whole thing works together. And when you're doing that, it's going to be integrated into all the levels of how you're doing things. Um, and in the end, you're going to have a much more integrated product except something that doesn't have something slapped on top of it. So how do you think about it in those terms? So if you want to start thinking about how you're doing it without focusing on the visual aspects of design, you want to think about things like structure, organization, content, message. I know that sounds kind of, I'm not sure exactly how that translates into what I'm doing, but you know, these are all just kind of starting points to get you thinking on a different path of how to think through you know, what design means or how you can put design into what you're doing. How do you actually take, you know, and translate all these things? You can use tools like these. You can use wireframes. You use palettes to organize your colors. You can use the copy. That's how you get message across, and that's kind of a part of the design process. Where I work, I'm, you know, usually responsible for getting the copy and getting the right copy, get finding it from people. That's part of my, I think it should be part of my job as a designer, because I think that goes into the message that, and the thing that I'm communicating through the design. Um, things like mood boards, too. I know that sounds all really hippie and squishy, but they're fun. You can totally do them as a developer. If you're working on your own application and you don't have access to a, a designer, but, you know, or maybe you do down the road and you want to give them your thoughts, then, you know, put together a place like, I like this font, I like these colors, I like this picture, I want it to feel like this, this is what makes me think of, that type of thing. That's useful information that you can use to, to translate into visual design or give to somebody who else who can do that. I think I, did somebody want to ask something? Yeah. I was just trying to figure out exactly what I'm doing. Okay. I, I think you're okay, good. Because I was going to make sure that that, that was kind of clear. Because it, it's a little bit of, I, it always, I don't know, mood rings, it sounds weird, you know? But they're, they're kind of fun. It's like, it's like making a collage when you were younger. Although, That's, yeah. Whatever works, scrapbook, pinboard. I've heard a couple people refer to them as different things. So whatever works for you. Okay, my second myth that I would like to try to destroy is this idea that design is subjective. Um, yeah, I think this is a really insidious one. I think I, I said a little bit before about I feel that there's a conception of design just happening and that it doesn't have a rhyme or a reason. It just is kind of like, oh, that looks nice. And I just, I just feel it, right? There's no rational thought process going through that. It's just like, oh, okay, that's, that's good. Does anybody here watch Mad Men? Yeah? So there's, I think there's a point when, um, I, I want to, I forget, somebody else came in, new came into the office and he's like, you know, there's just all these creatives and they're just sitting around and they're just playing with pencils all day. Like, I, they're not working, they're not doing anything. And Don Draper defended them as like, that's how they do work. And then all of a sudden it'll just come together. And it's like, you know, that's a nice idea. I actually think that's perpetuating a really bad stereotype about creatives because it kind of perpetuates this idea too, that it's just like, 
totally just formless up in the air and it just kind of happens. And there is an aspect of creativity and thinking through things that's not in a schedule, but you know, does, I think that makes it harder for people like developers to understand what designers are doing because they don't see this process going on. So they don't know what's happening. There's thought processes happening. There are principles in design, just like there are principles in development. Not exactly rules, but you know, are there rules in development? There are things that work for certain reasons and things that don't work for certain reasons. And you can rational, you know, go through those rationally and design is exactly the same way. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just give you some examples of some basic principles. I'm not gonna go into too much detail because I'm not teaching you about design really. I'm just gonna try to give you some examples to help you think about how to um, problem solve with this. And like I said, we're doing this not to saying like, oh, I like that and that's it. I guess you could do that sometimes, but you can also do certain things like using actual tried and true design principles that people teach. And examples, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through these pretty quickly because like I said, I don't want this to be a class. So you can use things like balance. These are good examples. Repetition. These are things that we use to kind of reemphasize, uh, you know, sections of a site where you are on the site, the branding of the site, things like that. Emphasis, if something's really big, it's probably really important. That's a very clear visual translation of a message. And so that's how we, use, we build up a language through using all of these things to communicate to the people reading, going through the site, using the application, whatever it is, of what we're doing with these things. Proximity, if you have things together, they probably, if you have them physically together, they probably belong together thematically. Everything is nice and pretty. I know there's a lot of Apple stuff in there. That's part of your design education. Pay attention to them, they know what they're doing. Um, you know, and if everything looks cohesive, it belongs together. You're sending a message to about, you know, what you're, where you are, what you're using. It's all about the communication stuff there. These are another level down. Like I said, I don't want to get too deep into the actual nuts and bolts of this. This is stuff you're interested in. There's a ton of resources, and I am not your best resource for that. Because like I said, I, don't, I pick all this stuff up on the fly. So there's lots of books, lots of things that go in there. But basically, what I want you to get out of that is that you can learn this, and you can learn these rules and these principles, and then you can learn how to employ them to achieve the effect that you want. It's not magic. We're not sitting around just waiting for lightning to strike. We're using tried and true principles about why something works or why it doesn't design-wise, and then we're learning how to translate that into what we're making. Does anybody else have any questions before I go on here? Yeah. Sure. Okay. I'm actually working on putting together a much better set of resources for this talk, which I unfortunately don't have complete right now, but hopefully I will soon. If you guys follow me on Twitter, we'll do more of that. We'll probably get more into that later, too. Um, somebody else have something quick? Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd really like to hear that. So usually my experience is that people really like to talk about things at the end, so I'm going to leave plenty of time to kind of go through all that stuff. So, All right. Third myth I want to attack. Design is separate from development, and I've kind of got through this a little bit before, but I'm going to go a little bit more into that this is totally wrong. I think it's totally wrong. I, I don't think it works. I've been in, you probably have too, been in work experiences where you have a design department, they create a mock-up and a PSD, and then they turn it over to the developers, and their part is done. Hands off, I'm done, whatever. Then developers are like, what the hell did you, we can't do this. And, you know, and then you have that going. Or the other thing around, like I described earlier, where somebody does an application, a site, whatever, then turns it over to a designer to make it look pretty. And we have like two totally separate tracks going on and they're not connecting and they're not communicating and that doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. And I think it causes nothing but strife and problems and then you end up with a product that has been going on two separate tracks and you don't have those connections of, of thought and purpose and functionality. There isn't stuff going on there. So I think that what we need to do is work together on things. It's a really radical idea. But I think instead of keeping them separate, we can get them together and integrate them so that we're making stronger stuff and better stuff. This is really what I think the end goal is. Um, some ways I think to do that. First of all, like, let's not have silos. Let's not have designers and developers over here. Um, I, work in a, I work in an agile shop now. There are about there are over 30 developers. There are three designers. 
Um, we pair with developers. Like literally, we would sit down and pair with developers. We go through whatever they're working on to kind of give the sense of, and it, we're not doing any, a lot of times we're doing anything visual with that. It's all about structure, it's all about architecture, it's all about usability, it's all about flow. That's part of what we do as designers and we work directly with developers. When we start a new project, we have a design input, not just a mock-up, not just a visual, but like, this is what we want to do with this, you know, this is what we think about this. So every step of the process, we're still perfecting it, but every step of the process, we are working directly together with things. I think that is, and you know, it's, not only better for the end product, but it's a lot more enjoyable down the road. I know I like it when I'm not completely separate from the developers and I'm not over here and like I'm involved in what's going on all the time. And you know what? Developers really, really like it too. That's been our experience so far is that they really love working with a different perspective and, and getting some of that input early on in the project and under seeing this other side of things. So let's break down those walls. I think that's a good way to start. That goes into the project integration thing. I really advocate for when you're starting a project is to have this stuff in mind at the very beginning. If you're starting an application, you're starting whatever you're doing. Again, if you can't have a designer in there, you know, think about this. Have somebody who is thinking about the design considerations from the beginning. So that can be built into your process. And you know, if you can't, well, you really need to have someone there. You really need to have someone there. I think it's really important to do that. Um, if you don't have access to designers, it's sometimes they're hard to find, you know, they're out in the wilderness and they're like an elusive species, they're, but they're not really, I'm being sarcastic. There are communities, like go, go, go to, you, if you're stuck in your user groups, like there are design groups. Cincinnati has awesome design groups. I know I'm from Columbus, there's a great interaction design chapter there too. Um, I bring developers to those meetups all the time and they love it. Everybody loves it. The designers love it, developers love it. Like reach out, go to the design groups, go to schools, universities, that have people coming out. Um, you know, if that's what, talk to these people. They really wanna talk to you, honestly. <laughs> Most of them do. If they don't, then you don't wanna work with them anyway, but there's a lot of them out there who are really interested in all this stuff. So go talk to their groups and things like that. Yeah. I just wanted a quick pitch for that right here in Cincinnati, who's out awesome design students. I have heard that actually. I hear there's a, there's some good programs and stuff going on there. So that's that's really great. Like do more of that. And that gets comes back around to this communication thing in general. Like just talk to them. Just talk to them. They 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 should want to talk to you. And there are people out there who are really interested in that. Most people are doing this stuff like we're not in, you know, just in a cubicle, we're not just getting a paycheck. If you're here, you care about what you're doing. You wouldn't come to some place like this if you didn't care about this. So, you know, they're the same way, they care. If you go to events like this, you go to user groups, like they're doing that of their own free will, so they really care about these things. And those are the type of people that you wanna to talk to and stretch your boundaries with and build bridges with, and they're gonna be open to that. So on the other hand of this, <laughs> um, I have been, I'm a little hard on the developers. If it makes you feel any better, I am 10 times harder on designers. I'm really, really hard on designers. I feel that it just so happens that this is, in this goal of collaboration and integration, I think designers have a bigger responsibility. You need to step up. Um, I'm gonna do the next line of this, which may be a little contentious. You can argue about me as much as you like. Designers should code. They should, period, sorry, that's the way it is. I, you know, I don't think, I think we're done with designers working in an interactive industry who know Photoshop and then stop. You know, I, I'm never gonna be a real big programmer or anything like that, but if you understand the principles behind this, you, that's how you can design most effectively for it, is understanding the functionality, and then you have the tools that you need as a designer to design for the functionality, design what's for what's going on. Um, I will, I, you know, I'll, I'll grain a little bit with, of leeway with this. I mean, I honestly do. I mean, I, I do think designers should Straight up, you should be coding. You should be able to jump into things. Where I work, we take it on our, ourselves as designers when we pair with developers to be able to tackle anything they have. We learn all of their tool set. We're working on learning Vim and Emacs. So no matter what developer we pair with, we can jump right into their environment and work with them. We take that responsibility on as designers. I think that's really awesome. I like doing that. And of course, there's always gonna be a line. We don't, I'm never gonna be a developer full on. 
And I don't want developers to become designers full on. We each have our own jobs. We each have our own specialties. That's totally cool. But if we can learn about each other's tool sets, if we can learn about each other's thought processes, our work processes, we're just going to have that much more knowledge about what's going on on the other side of that. And then we can put them together much more better. So that's essentially what I'm thinking about when I say designers should code. Same thing, I think that developers should understand design and you can design to a certain extent and learn how to put all these things together. And in the end, we're gonna end up with a lot happier people because you know, you're working together and sharing ideas and you're seeing different perspectives. And all of that good diversity of experience and thought is gonna go into make stronger products. So you're gonna have better shit in the end, which is really what we are trying to do, right? So that's my whole thing. Now, anybody have any other questions or comments you want to bring up? So yeah. where, do you, where, do you, where are you drawing the line right now when you think about that? Right, so is it, is it HTML, CSS, where you can take the design out of Photoshop and do that? Or uh, are you going as far as kind of like back? Because like front-end development right now is really changing a lot. It is. That's true. So like, like you're expecting people to kind of move into backbone and that kind of stuff where it's, it's full-on JavaScript development? I, I fully acknowledge that me saying this is, is being a little bit of a jerk about it just because I think so. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. He was asking me where do I draw the line between, okay, you know, what should designers know how to code? Um, and I will say that my personal preferences, I will not necessarily put those on everybody else and say you should do that. Well, I mean, I will because I'm kind of like that. But, you know, um, I think HTML, CSS is an absolute minimum. I don't, I, re I really don't understand people who call themselves web designers who don't know HTML, CSS. That does not work for me at all. I can't handle it. You can argue with me if you want. It's all right. You can argue with me later, though. Um, Personally, my preference is, I think, yeah, dig in as deep as you want. I think you should go deep into as much JavaScript. But I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to put limits. I think it does depend on your environment, too. There are people who are a little bit more, you know, are doing more websites and they're doing, like, heavy applications. And there's different things like that going on. So I'm willing to grant leeway as far as individuals and individual situations go. Um, my personal preface is go as deep in the code as you want. Or not even that, as you possibly can. Like just learning so much about it is, I think it's nothing but good. But um, so, you know, that, that's, a, that's a big thing. Front end development is changing a lot too. So I think I'll leave a lot of open for personal preference and personal situations. But my basic rule of thumb is that go as deep as you possibly can. Okay, yeah. Um, I wanted to make a comment on that, the whole concept of designers and coding. Okay. And, um, and add to that that um, one of the things that I've seen is, that in, in my experience with designers, is that um, designers who don't code tend to make design tend to have, have come up with designs before that just, that don't really mesh well with uh, with what with the way things just work in web browsers, and you end up having to do some really weird, tricky things with CSS that aren't really that shouldn't have to do. Um, and it makes things a lot harder to code. And whereas designers who can't code understand the constraints of the web browser and, and uh, you know, the, <coughs> the way that it's going to react as, as users expand and the mm -hmm. browser, and that people have different resolutions and stuff like that. So I think it goes, it goes beyond just um, having an understanding of, you know, it goes beyond just you know, being able to code so that you, so that you can depend on the developer, but so that I think it actually will improve um, your web design. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent point, and that's what's informed my opinions on that, is that I've been, since I've, I've worked in, in different areas, I've worked in places where I've just been a designer, I've worked in places where I've just been a front-end designer. I had horrible experiences as a front-end dev taking other people's designs who, you know, are I don't talk to them, they're off in a corner by themselves, and they give me a Photoshop mock-up, and it's got drop shadows all over the place, and this was like three years ago. And you know, just all this stuff, and I didn't have access to. I'm not allowed to do anything with Photoshop. It's just my, my, and it's just kind of like I would have designed this differently, and not like the whole thing, not just visually what it looks like. It's like I would have positioned these things differently because I know how you have to implement them, and you may design this in a way that doesn't jive with implementation, and that doesn't make any sense to me because if, if it's not designed well enough to be implemented, then I don't think it was designed hardly at all, or. At well at all. So I think that's a really good point too that you know it's not just I guess I would like to agree exactly when I'm saying code it's not just the actual code it's not just actually like putting things down um, in terminal or whatever it is actually understanding the environment that you're in. Yeah. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I have a question but I'm just 
That's cool. As a designer, if you dive in first into HTML5, mm -hmm. you may be ahead of a lot of developers by the time you come back up. That's a good point. And some of the stuff is happening in CSS3 too. Like I teach, in, I, I teach introductory HTML and CSS classes and we're not quite to that level, but I try to teach it as a gateway to programming because if they can jump into that type of stuff, and, you know, have a background in HTML, CSS, and then jump into what's going on now with HTML5 and CSS3, there's some pretty amazing stuff going on. Yeah. That's a really good point. I like that idea. Okay, lots of people. Um, actually, I think you were first, so. Can you talk more about how uh, you as a designer <coughs> pair with developers on working with developers? I like pair programming, mm -hmm. and that's cool and all. And I'm wondering about the, more the details about pairing with design, because it seems like it would be harder to be a pair. Pairing designers with developers or de pairing designers? Because we do both. <laughs> yeah. Right. And we're still, and I'll be perfectly honest, where I am now, I think we're still working out a little bit of the details with that. So we're still getting it. Um, I can give you kind of a good example, which is actually kind of funny that one of the times I became kind of really, really aware of how useful it could be, I actually was pairing with one of the other designers, but he's been there for a little while. And I mean, he's a full on developer at this point. Like he, he, he's definitely there. He and I were working through, we were, had a plugin going on in a Rails app because we had just thrown in this forum plugin. It wasn't flowing very well. And so we're basically going through there and we're like, yes, we're tweaking some things in CSS. We're changing some font sizes. We're changing some colors. We're adding icons. but. What was really bothering us about it is like the actual like using it, like actually where things, you know, where links are and how breadcrumbs are functioning and things like that. So we ended up actually probably doing more stuff, you know, just with the Rails components of things than we were just in CSS. That's the type of thing that I think of when we're thinking about if you're sitting with a developer who is working on some features, functionalities, whatever you're going through. You know, you, the designer is the one kind of thinking, okay, like, well, but how do you actually flow through this? And how are you actually using this? And I know developers do this to a certain extent, but usually it's just having a designer that's a little bit, another, uh, you know, degree removed, uh, or, you know, to get a better perspective on some things. So um, I know that still doesn't get into a lot of the details. It's kind of a thing that, I don't know if I have all the details for that. It's a very new thing for me personally and still working a lot of that stuff out. Um, it's, it's just kind of, but it also depends. I see the same thing pairing of developers or I pair with designers too. It, it's hard to predict exactly what comes out. It's all about that melding of minds and people who have different ideas and different perspectives. And so it's just creating a situation where you have people from specifically very different perspectives coming out a problem from those different perspectives and see what can come out of it solution-wise that you might not have think of because you were in a different discipline. Does that help a little bit at least? Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Kind of along those lines, I mean, I would think that, well, as, as a developer, you know, if I had a designer, I mean, whether or not the design was actually already produced, and I mean, having a designer there to kind of walk me through, like, specifically interaction decisions, like, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, you know, know how to, you know, I can take a you know, CSS and, you know, hook it up to the database, make sure things are working, but, like, you know, what happens if somebody clicks? Right. Like, you know, if, some, if I have somebody else to bounce off my idea right then and there, I'm like, oh, great. Or mm -hmm. Designer has an idea, like we just change that color up really quickly, or if, you know, you know. Right. And so yeah, I can do that instead of the whole, the whole loop, uh, you know, feedback loop. I think would be really helpful. I think you kind of just did a better job of describing it than I did. So that's essentially kind of how it works. It's just being able to, as things come up or as ideas come up, you can try them out instantly and see if it works or it doesn't without having to go through a long process of like, oh, we did that, we did all this work, and now it doesn't work. And I so. find myself stumped sometimes. Like, well. Should it really look this way, or should it look this way? Mm -hmm. it's not, it's, it doesn't look like I think the designer intended, so you know, maybe it's right. not, yeah. It's just easier to test things out right yeah, away. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, did you have something? Uh, can I okay. It's like cross pollination of ideas. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, when you have that pairing. Right. And, uh, insights come from both sides of the fence. The designer works on Well, what's the 
-hmm. I think what it comes down to a lot is what you're talking about is the designer is, it's part of the job of the designer, especially you're doing designing interactions like that, is think about it more from the user perspective too. And you know, I know there are a lot of developers who are really good at that too, and that's awesome. But you know, as a developer, you can, you should be more concerned with you got to deal with you know the constraints and the realities of what's going on, and so sometimes it's hard to keep all of those things going at once. So when you have people who have different ideas or different perspectives in mind, it's easier to balance all of that and then make sure they get integrated too. One of the mm -hmm. Right. 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 And you have more experience about how to translate that better in different terms. Um, anybody else have anything? I thought I saw, yeah. Um, you, you, know, you mentioned about you know, the designers have user groups and things mm -hmm. like that. My experience from dev, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a dev. Mm -hmm. I go to user groups all the time. I know we have discussions. You know, <laughs> I help, I help uh, organize the pip camp. So okay. We have problems because we get the dev user groups and get developers to come to the right. camp. We have yet to really find a really strong group in Cincinnati. I know, I know Ryan and Bobby are starting something up here. So I, I could be. But yeah. I want to know. My, my question with you is, you have that perception, and I assume Columbus probably has those people, where designer and developers can get together like that? Actually, not much, and I don't know where I got that perception. I could be totally wrong with that then. I already had just had an idea I heard from some people. Great. Okay, <laughs> make it happen, you guys. Like, why doesn't it? So, I mean, I just wondered if, you know, you guys right. getting that, maybe kicking those things off, and you get the big deal. Okay. There really, yeah, I don't think a lot exists like that. There is, no, there is not something in Columbus that actually exists quite like that. Everything that I'm trying to do is kind of an uphill battle. Like it's literally like I, I, get, I go to developer conferences and I, I do this and I bring, you know, I tell my designer friends that, hey, yeah, you should come do this. And I go to design groups and bring the developers along with me. So it's like me pulling. I, yeah, I, I hope so, because I do it whether they like it or not. You know, I, I don't really think there, there's a lot that exists that really does this now. And that's honestly something I'm very interested in trying to do more of is this kind of, I mean, I'd love to do it. Some of you know that I, I run uh, programming classes and I teach classes and things like that. Um, I'd really like to start some classes for people like bridges like that to, you know, classes specifically for developers who want to learn about design or vice versa, or classes specifically to breed that type of hybrid developer designer, um, which isn't exactly the same, but you know, I feel like there's a lot of stuff in this realm, whether it's social groups, classes, education, everything. Um, I think we're right there and it's not exactly there yet. I think there's a lot of interest. I mean, I hear, I've given this talk a lot and people are, really like it. Um, I talk to designers and they're like, yeah, it'd be cool to know some of this stuff. I know I teach a lot of people in my HTML, CSS classes who are visual designers, like, oh, I've always wanted to do that, like cross over. So I feel like we're right there. I don't think it's quite happened yet. So I think that the, all there is to it is to, we just need to push and, and do that. I think it would be really great to start groups that were specifically for these connections, for this intersection of the two disciplines. Um, I, I think a, some of the, there's in a lot of cities they have the refresh uh, movement. I don't know if anybody, has anybody heard of that? Well, that's what I think. Is, are you, oh, I think I did hear, you're starting refresh. I saw that on Twitter. There is. Um, I think that, as far as I know, I could be a little bit wrong with what you're trying to do here in Cincinnati, but I know that in other groups that I think that there's a little bit more of an intersection of the, these two things going on there, which I really like. I've actually tried to get that going in Columbus and haven't pushed it. I should probably push again. Um, so I, I, think it's, I think we just need to step up and do it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
fall in the sort of the just general web crowd of uh, venture capitalists, marketing, uh, kind of more the user side, so they're not mm -hmm. specifically design groups, they're just kind of web. There are several groups that are web meetups around here. Mm -hmm. Are you, are you saying there are more groups that are a little bit more kind of on the business side of things rather than making things? That's so yeah. Right. No, I see where you're coming from with that. The, the poorly named Web Tech Drink Up's goal was to connect all of those groups. Uh, design and development, not just Ruby developers or Python developers, but anybody involved in, like anybody in this room basically was the target for the drink up. And yeah. we've been talking to Ryan, uh, that Ryan, not that Ryan, uh, <laughs> AIGA about, you know, getting more involved mm -hmm. with the design community and the development community, but not any particular like focus, right. just to get us talking to each other. Yeah, and I, I do think there are, I mean, there are pockets, there are, there are differences in all of it. I mean, but it's, I mean, in design, it's the same way. There are some people who have very traditional education, and there are some people who have, I've only ever done stuff that's interactive. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to talk to the profession, you know, traditional people who have a traditional design background. Like, that stuff doesn't make as, as much sense to me. So there's still the same kind of pockets in design, and there are people who are in, so, I mean, like, web stuff is a pocket in the larger sense of design, too. So, I mean, the same thing is, is happening on most things. I mean, I don't think there's any solution for it, but just let's break those barriers down and just, you know, have as much conversation and much communication between them as, as possible. And I, I think it is possible. I like the, I do think things are opening up a little bit more. I mean, the proliferation of, there's so many groups and there's, there's so many events happening and s events like these that are all about like, you know, let's bring everybody together. So I think that's something else that's kind of on the tipping point or it's starting to realize that like, we don't need to stay in boxes of anything, you know, let's, let's all mix it up and things like that. So I think it's something to be aware of, but I think it's changing and I think we can push it to go farther. So I, I yeah. Think refresh was a thing, I thought it was a clever name. Bobby Ryan. Oh, sorry. I don't, what, what is refresh or, and refreshing I, Do you want to take that? I miss you guys' workshop. Feel free. Uh, <coughs> if you. Bobby and I have the same inspiration that a lot of people have been describing. This time being great connection designers and developers working together and trying to get with each other. And you know there's a big lag community between the two in Cincinnati. And as I think that's awesome, and I think there needs to be more to that. I have to say, in my personal experience, I mean, I've been going around to giving this talk. I, you know, I talk a lot about the things that I do in my own career. I've, there's a ton of interest. I feel like, um, especially from developers. I, I mean, I know so many developers. I was just talking to a couple, you know, once a day about. I, not only are there developers that I know who specifically want to move into front end stuff. I feel like I've talked to so many of those people lately. Even the people who don't want to make an actual like career change are still really interested in all this stuff. Like they want to learn about it. And like I said, I give this at very hardcore kind of coding conferences where it's all developers who have never done, who don't even work with designers hardly at all. And they're really interested in this topic. So I feel like, you know, if, we, if you create these, these, spot, these spots, these places, I, I think the interest is out there. I think it's a matter of just building up places for people to congregate and letting this communication happen. So I, I personally really believe that. It's been my experiences just talking to people. So I think they're out there. I think we just need to build ways of getting them together. Any other questions, comments? All right, I'll call it. Thank you.